Hello everybody, this is Bodrich and I have made a new script. I call it ES. ES is uh, a script that, whoops, uh, that wasn't what I wanted to do. Uh, ES, uh, it's very simple. Uh, you, you pass either a file or uh, a command to ES and then it will open, uh, if it's a command, it will see if it's a script. If it is a script, it will open it in Sublime. If it's, a, if it's a file, if it's a text file, it will open it in Sublime or your text editor. I'm using Sublauncher uh, because uh, that's my own little uh, uh, Sublime Launcher script. Well, yeah, we, we can use here ES Sublaunch because Sublaunch is a command in my path. So that, then I can pass this and then it opens Sublaunch, the file here. Um, in Sublime. As you can see, the script here is called uh, main.sh. Uh, this is the full path uh, to this sublaunch uh, command. Because sublaunch is really just a sim link in my bin directory, which I actually have open here. So uh, we can do this, I guess. There we can see sublaunch, uh, maybe even do. Sublaunch is a sim link to this file here. Um, and that is uh, what ES does here. I pass sublaunch. Uh, then I have a test here. N, uh, then a variable. If this variable, TRG, contains a value, uh, value that is uh, uh, what N stands for. If TRG is not empty. But we also make here, uh, this is like a double thing in a way, you know. If TRG doesn't have a value, we, we assign it a value, which is the content of the output of this command here, which then it takes $1, which is sublaunch here in this example, uh, pass standard error to dev null, but we store standard out in, in the uh, variable here. But if which here, uh, because which it works, works like this, if we pass sublaunch to which, it will print the path uh, to that uh, uh, file uh, or that command. You can do it with uh, any executable command here. Thuner, let's uh, locate it here. We could do maybe i3, maybe man. And uh, even bash, whatever you see, you can use it like this. So, it, uh, and it kind of uses your your path uh, to to resolve that command. Um, but if you pass uh, something that doesn't exist, uh, bash it, it, it then it, you, you get some. Uh, all, all of this is uh, standard error. Uh, it says no bashed and then it prints my whole path here. Uh, but if you suppress a, a, a standard error, send it to dev null, then, then it will not, uh, you will get an empty thing here. But it's only standard error, uh, file descriptor 2. So bash, it still prints this to standard out. And that is what's stored here in TRG. Uh, but if we would pass here something that doesn't, uh, that which cannot find, uh, then it tests uh, with this or still inside the same double brackets here, bashes them all the way. Um, then we make another test to see if uh, trg colon equals dollar uh, one is a file. And here it's important uh, that you that this test is after this one. Uh, because when you use this trg colon equals, uh, that will only assign here, trg uh, will get assigned $1 only if trg is empty. And that is true for both this place and this place, of course. Uh, and it, it will always be empty here, uh, because that is exactly what this test does. It tests here if trg is empty, then it do this. So then we can safely uh, uh, kind of reassign uh, TRG here. This is just to save lines. It's kind of silly uh, in a way, but whatever. 
but if we would add this file file test first then it would uh, because dollar one will probably never be empty maybe we should test that also but we really don't need to do that but as long as dollar one is not empty then trg will always get a get a value if uh, if this test would be first and then this test would never fail but we would sometimes get and, and it would never uh, uh, execute the witch here even yeah you, i don't know maybe you get it maybe you don't whatever if it's not a command if it's not an existing file then uh, this block is never entered and we just erx dollar one not found and erx is a very simple function here that uh, prints something to standard error and then exit with uh, exit code one um, so that is what it does here if it cannot find the command so es ballongen 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 not found okay uh, but if the command exists then we do uh, we, we reassign I, I know this is kind of messy I, I'm not sure why I'm, I'm doing this but whatever uh, we use the same variable everywhere here so here we reassign trg uh, to the output of this command file mime and then we pass uh, the full uh, path of trg following uh, if it is a sim link then we follow that sim link and pass uh, kind of the source file uh, and we pass that to the command file and the command file it works like this uh, we can take here for, for instance user bin bash here we pass that to file we get this output it's an elf uh, file prints information about a file so this is an elf 64-bit uh, binary Py executable, blah blah blah, all kinds of weird stuff. No one know, knows what this really means, you know. Uh, but you get a completely different uh, uh, output if you send pass a, a script file. For instance, uh, let's see which, and then we can take. We can actually take this es uh, es script because that's located here in my bin directory. It's a sim link. So if we pass that to file, we get this. And it just say this is a symbolic link and it also uh, gives us the, uh, where that link points to but we don't get any, any information about uh, the, the the content of, of that file if you want you could could do this you can pass uh, the long option or the short option capital l and that will follow the sim link and then it prints your information about the about the sim link saying that this uh it, it's a bash uh, script ascii text executable uh, but here I also use mime because mime gives you a more uh, reliable and compact uh, output now it says text here text slash and this it, it will always say text if it is like a plain text file for for instance a bash script but also like a uh, if you if you create a, a, a C c file writing c uh, programming language or a javascript file it will also pass here and say text and then it might say uh, shell script it might say something else here but this is really what we are interested in if, if we want to open it in in our text editor in my case sublime then i really want to know that it is a text file and not a binary file like uh, for instance uh, uh, bash would be uh, let's see file and then we can do mime on usr bin bash here and that says that that doesn't say uh, text slash here so that's what i'm looking for here text slash and then something some more information uh, or colon space text slash that string have to be uh, uh, in in the output of file here and here we have colon space application here we have colon space text slash so that would match this uh, and before the colon uh, I, I store that content in a group here um, and that is of course uh, the path to uh, uh, the file we are testing with file here and by storing that in a group I can reuse that group by using bash rematch here uh, and that will contain uh, that first part part of the file output 
and that is what I path pass to uh, in this case sub launch. Uh, but this could also say subble here. Maybe I should do that in this example, but whatever. It could also say vim, but then it would only work if you would execute this command in a terminal, and sometimes you don't want, uh, want to do that. Um, and I also use exec here, and exec means that uh, this command, uh, everything after exec here, w should be a command that will replace the current process, and that process is this, th the process of this script itself, will get replaced by this command instead. Uh, and that means that uh, this script will, will terminate when you execute it with exec. Uh, the, and this command will have the same process ID. The, it, it's kind of a really good practice to, to, to use exec wh when you can. And this is a good uh, place for it. And that means that the, uh, the rest of the script will, will not uh, get executed uh, if this script uh, this test here fails, this regular expression test fails, then we print another error message saying that this is not a text file. So that means we can safely use this and it will not open binary files, for example, bash here, it just say bash is not a text file, so it doesn't open that. Uh, but it did try bash here from my mm, 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 system directory, so to speak. It, it doesn't only use uh, uh, my bin directory or, and I can have as many uh, bin directories as I want, as long as they are in my path. path. And that is uh, why this script is kind of nice, you know. Uh, you don't have to set up like all your uh, directories where you store your script. I, I don't have to do like bin deed is equal to home bin and maybe bin deed 2. Because I, have, I actually have a couple of, of different directories. Uh, I think I have like one that's called scripts maybe, or maybe I don't, but whatever. You know, you don't, you don't have to do something like this. Uh, you just have to add them to your to your path, you know. So yeah, kind of neat. And I actually hooked it up here to this script here. I have this script, edit script here. Um, new stuff it's called. Uh, so I can create something new. I want to create a new script. You can just do new sc scripter. There, it created a new scripter here. We have it here. We also have it in our uh, path actually now. It, it should be in this directory here. LS new. And there we have new scripter. There we also have new stuff and new bash and whatever. Uh, and we can do echo hello from scripter. And then we can execute new scripter here. And it kind of works, you know. Uh, but this uh, new stuff here, uh, what that really does is just executing this new bash script here. We can we can look at it because now it's so easy. You know, I, I can just do this es new stuff. Sure, now I am in that uh, directory, so it wouldn't be that complicated. But here we can see th this script just execute new bash and then exit this new stuff script. I, I used to have a little menu asking me if I wanted, uh, wanted to edit a script or a post and blah 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 but actually I, I always want to use this for bash scripts so whatever and if we look at new bash you can see this but here I actually use uh, es here meaning that when I execute this new new bash script and if I would uh, uh, enter the name of a script that already exists then it will test that uh, with ES and that means it will open that already existing script in, in the editor instead of creating a new one and creating a new directory and everything. So that's kind of neat uh, and let's uh, see if we can take one script that already exists. For instance, um, yeah, let's just take i3 this with there. Then it opens that uh, uh, script for me in Sublime. If the script wouldn't exist, it wouldn't open it. So yeah, I don't know, uh, and I also thought maybe I should, uh, um, I think I want to, to um, improve this uh, menu a little bit. Why not have it display all, all existing scripts in my bin directory, you know, uh, because we are already using a, 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 a Rofi menu. Let's see if we can do that quickly here. If we do this instead. Layout D. I'm sure we can do dark. 
and then ls bin like that. Okay, f8. Okay, yeah, we got all the scripts there. But ah, it's the uh, expos y pos okay, there. There! Now it opens in layout D here, meaning it will open it in the D container, if that is visible. If the D container wouldn't be visible, like now, um, then it will look like this. It will default to, to the top bar here. But I can actually modify and add a, a fallback container uh, if I wanted to, but whatever, this is fine. And maybe this is even uh, better. And now I can just select a, a script here, for instance, uh, bashpud. It opens bashpud, but I could also do uh, bashpud2 and then it creates a new script instead, bashpud2 and creates a loop. Kinda neat, kind of neat, I must say. Um, new bash. Yeah, the, this is great. Uh, so I don't know, maybe now you, you get like, so, some of you might not know about this i3 menu that is, uh, it is actually Rofi, all the menus here that were displayed, uh, they are Rofi menus, but I have this wrapper script called i3 menu, so I can pl place them in, in special locations like uh, overlaying a, a, a already existing container and things like that, and it's it's uh, kind of smart, so it knows when, when the container resizes, it, we, I get a different size of the menu. I just like that, whatever, that's just me. But every time I, I show this uh, script, I very seldom get uh, downvotes on my channel. Uh, I have kind of a good track record. But every time I show uh, this i3 menu script, I get a downvote on that video. I, I don't know, that is, someone really don't like my <laughs> i3 menu script. Uh, I'm not sure why, uh, because it's excellent. But it all only works with uh, uh, i3 and it also only works with my uh, i3s uh, thing. GitHub i3s. And let's not get into any detail. Ah, here's someone who have forked i3s, cool. i3 assist. Wait now. Is this made before i3s? February 2, 2017. I think that this actually... God damn it. Python 3 facilitate using i3 for electron cryotomography. Weird. Uh, let's see, can we see here? Mm. I know that. But this is kind of important. Whoa. Once upon a time I, I did a lot of work here. <laughs> but uh, something happened. Yeah, I was such a happy person back then. Okay, November 19, 2017. As on the hub. So, yeah. These guys were, were, were there before me. Okay, let's see the homepage here, a Python library. I have no idea what, the, what it really does here. It's like uh, fancy words that I don't even know how to pronounce. To make using i3. And it's always a capital I. I, I. I'm not even sure if it is I3, the window manager. Grid search. You know, it could be rotation matrix. I'm wondering if this is even for the window manager. I 
have to be something else, right? Okay, whatever. Uh, I hope hope you are doing uh, fine. <laughs> Dusty. Dustin Murad. This, I wonder, yeah, this is a Swedish. Uh, 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 I can see that on the sign here, that this is a Swedish. Uh, because I think this Dustin, it only exists in uh, uh, Sweden. Uh, it's like um, a retailer for computer stuff uh, or even office. Uh, not even sure how, how it is. I, I think nowadays uh, uh, private, uh, you, you, I can order stuff from Dustin, some things, but it's really from, from the start, the, it's kind of an old uh, old uh, chain that sold uh, yeah, the office supplies, you know, and maybe also even more focused on, on computer uh, stuff. And uh, here Dustin Morado apparently um, had found a boutique uh, when he was, uh, or maybe he is in Sweden, what do I know? Dig deep i3, my attempt to grok i3. It's really into this i3. i3 window. I don't even know what grok is, you know. i3 to chum. Operates is windowed out particles such as now I think this is something else. I don't know. Dustin Morado, if you're watching this, uh, I never meant to to copy copy your thing with I3S. Uh, but it's also i3 assistant script. Uh, sponsor, yeah, you can, whatever. Yeah, but that was what I wanted to show you, you know. In i3, as on GitHub, there is this i3 list, no, i3 menu is the uh, uh, script here that you need if you want to create menus like this. Add album arc, just open it in Sublime, super fast, great. Bada boo boo, bada bada. 